Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. And man, do we have a great show for you guys today. Before we get started, let's just say hi to everybody. Starting off with our cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. I have to fill you in. Okay, Sunday we take my little car out for a ride because I only ride once a week. It's 14 years old. It's an Audi TT Roadster, quadro, yellow bright yellow convertible so you only ride them once a week on sunday and i went driving around i said let's go to movie land in palm springs and i'll just look at the houses and suddenly i found myself driving to carrie grant's house which i know well and we stopped in the front of carrie grant's house and i looked over the fence and i said look how nice the orange trees got so big he's got so many oranges blah 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 now we get back in the car <clears throat> We get home and Jimmy said to me, guess what? We just got a confirmation from Grant Kramer that he will be on the show. And I freaked out. My skin got like bumps, goosebumps. I said, do you know who he is? He's Terry Moore, the movie star's son. Also, he is the God, Cary Grant is his godfather. I mean, is this not freaking spooky? So Kardashala, the big media. Kudrosha. What the hell her name? What's the name? Kudrosha Onakrol, Kud queen of the pan paranormal. Queen, queen of the paranormal, who was my dearest friend in the world. I called her immediately and I told her what was on. And she said, listen, Jane Russell is now with Cary Grant. And Jane Russell must have said, you know, go to Ron and send him a message. So we're going to ask Grant, when he comes on our show, does he have any kind of a, a dream or, or anything that maybe he remembered that Cary Grant would want to say? <laughs> so today, it's an, don't laugh, Jimmy. I, you know, people believe in Jesus. They believe in God. They believe in Allah. People believe in, in, in Thor. I mean, you know, they believe Thor. in everything. So why can't you believe <laughs> that people, after they pass on, do send us messages? I believe they send us messages while we're sleeping, when we're in our whatever state of mind that is. So let's see when Grant comes on what he has to say about his godfather, Cary Grant. We also have to say hello to the man behind the boards, Mr. Chad Murphy. Well, good hey, afternoon, baby. fellas. How you guys doing? Oh, good. How are you? The studio's looking show. sharp. Well, thank you. Also, I'm very excited to give you the news well, the about news? my sweet, dear, wonderful... Wait, 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 wait. Well, I want to ask Chad a question first, and then oh, you do okay. that. Hey, Chad, real quick. Like, we're okay with the air conditioner? I'm listening. Well, I'm listening. Cares? Nope. I can't hear an air conditioner. Good. That's good. good. That's All right. Good. Then we also okay. want to say hi to everybody in the <laughs> chat room. What's okay. up, chat, chat room? room. We, B. Claudia is in the chat room. Dave from Stars Now UK is in the chat room. I don't know who's in the chat room. It went by too fast. Sorry, everybody. Uh, but I'm sure a lot of our regulars are. We do have a great show for you guys today. Grant Kramer's coming on along with Jillian Armanante. I hope I pronounced that right. We'll find out when we get her on the air. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Two great superstars with wonderful, wonderful credits, both acting and producing and directing, I think, some of them. And uh, should be a lot of fun. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Ron. I'm happy to say that my sweet, dear, wonderful, loving friend, Lily Nicole McLeod, is doing beautifully after her breast surgery. They didn't take a breast off. They just took a lump out. And she's ha getting radiation. She's now in Prague, knocking them dead all over Europe. I mean, she's just sensational. And I cannot wait for her to come back to the United States, to Palm Springs, where I'm going to have the biggest party in the world at my house. And Lily is going to honor me with singing what about the beautiful children, which we will play next week for you? That song is absolutely wonderful. And Lily wants to dedicate it to the children that were mass murdered in Florida and for all the other people who have been killed by crazy people. And I think it's about time that we sing a song about the beautiful children and how beautiful they are. And the lyric is they run and they play and they're happy. And that's what children should be. Children should not be terrified to go to school. 
because some lunatic is going to come in and kill them. So Lily McLeod, my darling, I know you're listening to us from Prague or possibly seeing us. I send you thousands of kisses, honey, and hugs. Mwah. And I love you to death, and you know that. And when I hear you, what about the beautiful children? I always get teared up and cry because when you hit that last note, oh, my God, better than any of those famous broads. What were their names? The ones that Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston, please. You're better than her. <laughs> and the other one with the big tits. Oops, with the big boobs. Paula, Patty bo- LaBelle? No, Patty LaBelle's the best. No, the blonde. <laughs> no, she's even better than Lily. Oh, Mariah Carey. You don't Mariah like Mariah Carey. Carey. <laughs> Lily McLeod is better than all of them. She doesn't sing like Patty LaBelle because nobody sings like my Patty. Nobody can hit those notes. Maybe Lily could. I'm going to have to ask Lily about that. Anyway, next week, folks. Tune in and you'll hear What About the Beautiful Children by Lily Nicole McLeod. We also want to welcome Hannah Clive is in the chat room and Matt Warnerford is in the chat room. And I'm pretty sure Goddess showed up in the chat room because she said she wants to know like about her relatives too. <laughs> her dead relatives. You know, oh, I'm not, a, about I'm not a medium. No, when, when, what's her name? Cardoshula? What's her name? Queen of the Paranormal. Queen Just say the, that. My dear friend Carol. I call her Carol. <laughs> I don't know where the hell she got that name. Control Card- show? Well, her mother Ona should have, her mother should have been executed the day she gave the hospital that name. Wow. If I had that name, I would have killed my mother. I got to work. My name, my real name is not Ron. My name is Rolando. Now, could you picture me going to the world today as Rolando? What were they thinking? We were in Italy. I mean, we live in New York. My mother was an American, second generation, Ninth Avenue, Hell's Kitchen girl. Rolando. Where did Rolando come from? Well, look at you. Your name isn't Jimmy Starr. Well, I'm not going to say <laughs> know, your real can't... name. Of course, the, the cops will get him and put him in prison <laughs> for, for mutilation. For, you know, he, you think Crosby was bad. Jimmy drugged half of Florida and had sex with him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's funny, Crosby, not Crosby Cosby. <laughs> What's his name? Bill Cosby. See, I don't even like him, so why should I pronounce <laughs> Why should I pronounce? I never liked him, even when he was before uh, he was a rapist. I never liked him. I never thought he was funny. I always thought he was an arrogant black man who thought who the hell he was. He's and, very funny, though. Well, he looked down on black people, and I never liked that. That wonderful comedian that I'm crazy about, the, the, the lesbian one that curses all the time. What's her name? Uh, Wanda Sykes? Wanda She's Sykes. She's a bomb. I love Anybody know Wanda Sykes? I've been trying to get her on the oh, show. Wanda, <laughs> Wanda, you have to come on, honey, because you got fans here. I love, love Wanda Sykes. And one day she was up and down the aisles at one of these big fairs, you know, Academy Award things. And Bill Cosby turned around and he said to her, speak English. You don't have to speak street or whatever, Harlem, street whatever. Talk. And, urban, urban and she talk. was going to say, go F yourself to him. And I thought that was horrible. How dare he correct her on national television? And that's who Wanda is. Bill Cosby wanted to be blonde, blue eyed and white. Unfortunately, it came out the other way. But what can I say, Bill? Now you're in jail. And I don't think he's there yet. He's well, gonna he's going to go to jail. And you have a lot of time to think about the crap that you've said about black people that really insulted them. But that's not why he went to jail. <laughs> no, I know that. But, you know, there is a there's Murphy's Law. Somehow, sometimes you go to jail for things you really uh, are responsible for other things. Anyone that tells black people or gay people or any people how to behave has nerve. Lots of nerve. There you go. So we also want to give a welcome shout out. Tristan from Australia is in the chat room. Hey, Trist. And uh, he's promoting the show heavily today. And you guys really are going to have a fun show today. I really hope that, you know, because we love Carrie. Jimmy and I, I mean, I'm mad about Carrie Grant. My grandmother, who was 150, used to go to the movies and say to my mother in Italian, uh, Quello Scuro, will he be in the movie? Quello Scuro means the dark one. She never remembered names. She was like me. But Cary Grant to my grandmother was the dark one. 86 years old, she had the hearts for Cary Grant. Could you believe that? My family has sex forever. They just go on. They have sex the day they die. My father was uh, was 80, and he was feeling up the nurse's ass when my mother walked in and saw him, and he died like hours later. So, you know, our family. Yeah, my dad did that too, actually. Yeah, I think it's what men do before they die. They get their last free feel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chad, what's it like in Florida? Who cares? I don't know. It's cloudy, breezy. It's starting to get hot, starting to get humid. You know, that whole Florida going into summer type thing. 
But, yeah, uh, no, we're going to have it, too. It's, well, it's going to be Palm 100 Street. next week, but today it's beautiful. All week long, I've been wearing my fur coat, muttons. What? It's I'm really good. It's been cold. It's like freezing. 50 degrees yesterday. Oh, yeah. right. Palm Springs. You know, I loved it when I was moving back to Palm Springs, and all the jealous people in the snow said to me, Oh, it's so hot there. Where do you <laughs> get there? It's thousands. Of de- I'm freezing since I got here. Ghana <laughs> says there's like 60 other men that Bill Cosby like assaulted that that he didn't get in tr- trouble for, too. Oh, they're going to get them oh, one by one. On. Gone. But Thanks, God, Goddess. Goddess, don't you agree that Bill Cosby was anti-black? He was so pro-white. It was so obvious in everything he said and did. I mean, he spoke like 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 he was from Connecticut, you know, a blonde from Connecticut. Hey, anyway, hey. Chad. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, that's oh yeah, that's Fat Albert. Yeah. Uh, so so Chad, we're gonna play a world premiere music video. Let's pull out Sam's uh, Sam Stevens "Don't Cry," and then after we play it, we're gonna call our first guest. But don't call the first guest yet, because I want to play something else for that. Oh okay. You know, and uh, I also thought to myself, the second thing you want to play is only about a minute and a half long, so you have to do a quick setup. Remember that? Uh, oh, the uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Mm-hmm. I love that movie. Oh. Yeah, we'll be all right. I think well, if we're not all right, we'll figure it out. Did but. you know that? Well, we didn't tell them who's in that. The star of uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is Grant Kramer. Is Grant Kramer? Yeah. He's the star when he was that young, gorgeous boy. Now he's still gorgeous because he got his mother's looks. Jerry Moore, the movie star, it's beautiful. Go, everybody, go on YouTube and watch my interview of Terry Moore I did a couple of years ago. She's a lovely lady and a terrific uh, interview. Go watch. She'll talk about how we'd use. And Here we go, though. All right, you day. guys. So this is the world premiere. You guys, Sam Stevens has been on the show lots of times. This is his first single as a solo artist. It's called Don't Cry. Uh, this video was filmed and directed by Billy Hess out of New York, a good friend of ours. It was yep. edited by Spartan Productions and Phoenix Risen Studio. Phoenix Risen Studios. And here it is, everybody, the world premiere of Don't Cry by Sam Stevens. Enjoy! Nice guy, nice guy 
Wipe away your tears and stay with me tonight Don't Cry, that's the world premiere of the video. That's good. And uh, the song's available on all the digital download sites around the world. We got new people who jumped in uh, to the chat room. We want to say hi to Irish. Wait one second. That song is so great. It just makes you want to get up and dance. At least I do. That's what they're all saying, too. I love that song. Uh, Ghost Patrick, whose ghostly beard showed up into the chat room now. Hello, Patrick. And Irish Ginger is in here. And... A whole bunch of people just came in. I'm not sure who all of you are, but you guys, welcome to the show. We're going to call our next guest now, you guys. His name's Grant Kramer. He's the star of Killer Clowns from Outer Space, one of the coolest, funnest, campiest horror movies ever. And my favorite. To get an idea of uh, a little bit about it, we're going to play the trailer for Killer Clowns for Outer Space right now while we get him on the line. So, Chad, you play it and get us rocking and rolling. Roger that. Like all right, everybody. Like any night, then something happened. Something different. There's no shooting star. Why here? Why now? Why clowns? <laughs> They've been knocking him dead. All over the universe. What are you gonna do? Knock my block off. <laughs> Killer clowns from outer space. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 They're just cruising through the galaxy and stopped here for a bite to eat. You don't need a police bell, you need a psychiatrist. Uh-oh. They want to play games? They're messing with the wrong guy. What are you in for? Killer clowns from outer space. It's crazy. All right, Jimbo, there you go. All right, so we have Grant, but we can't hear him, Chad. Oh, that's not Grant, good. Grant, can you can you hear can you hear can you hear Chad? Okay, yeah. well, we can't hear you, and I'm not sure why. Maybe we should try to call him back, Chad. We can try that. Let's try calling the vi- you. Back. The We're gonna try and call in. you back and see if it works, because I don't know why it doesn't work. Um. All right, just hang up on him and uh, <clears throat> try him back now. Sorry, everybody. This is what happens. Chicken wound, chicken wound. Uh, let's see if we, if we can hear him this time. No, I still can't hear him. Why, what, Chad, what is that all um, about? Just unplug your headset and see if we unplug can get that internal headset. mic. No. Is your mic up? Is the volume up on the mic? Or what mic are you using? Well, he's got to have a mute. Uh, there should be a, in your settings in Skype, there should be a... Uh, a thing for volume to speak, I think. It shouldn't there be, Chad? Well, are you? Give me a thumbs up if you're on a laptop. Are you on a laptop? So yes, he's on, he's on a, a laptop. laptop. Um, the internal mic should be working, so I guess just go into options and Skype and see if you can find an audio setting and make sure the microphone volume's all the way up. There could be a a mute or a mic kill. 
Maybe we'll play one more video and then we can uh, see if we can get it worked out. Can we? All right. Uh, can, I need to hear him. I'm so excited that he's on the show. <laughs> you can't. You nice can't read book. lips, Ron. What's wrong with you? I put a nice shirt on for Grant. I mean, I'm, <laughs> you know, I love his mother. I know his mother, Terry Moore, and she's an angel. Yeah. And, you know, I want to talk to Grant about Mark. So let's play so everybody doesn't hear us trying to figure it out. All right. Um, let's play, uh, what do we got? We, let's play Worlds Apart Everlasting Love, everybody. This is Aaron Paul when he was in a boy band, <laughs> and uh, we let's love it. Let's play Lily's Beautiful Children. No, because he doesn't have it. He, I have to send it to them. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, hold on. He, he says, should, should I, I try, try to a little higher. reboot? Reboot. Should he try yeah. to reboot, Chad? I guess you could do that. Log off, reboot, and sign try back it. on. Try it. Log off and reboot. <laughs> All right. Give it a whirl. He's so sweet. All right. Worlds Apart, Jimbo. All right, everybody. Here's Worlds Apart, Everlasting Love. we got to hang up from him, too. Hang up from there him. There Everlasting love. All right. Hey, everybody. All right. That was Aaron Paul's group, Ever uh, Worlds Apart with Everlasting Love. And now we can actually hear Grant. Say something. Hey, guys. How you doing? Sometimes, Perfect. Sometimes nothing works like a good old-fashioned reboot. You know what I mean? It's kind of, yeah. Well, I thought, maybe it was, I thought maybe it was Cary Grant's spirit trying to get in to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and he knocked your, you out. <laughs> it's kind of like kicking this. When I was growing up, it's like kicking the side of the, you know, the uh, machine. You know, oh. our machine. I love it. All right. I, we're Wait. so happy that we got you. Wait, I got to do the, an introduction. I'm so excited. I know, no, but no. I have to get a, in a real introduction for everybody. Uh, so, all right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, 
actor, producer. Are you also a director? I am sometimes. Okay, so we're going to start all over. And hey, everybody, now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, very accomplished actor, producer, sometimes director, Grant Kramer. Hello and welcome to the show. Hey, guys, how you doing? Fantastic. Very Before we well. get started, i got to introduce you to everybody because he's just busting at the seams. So uh, first we'll start off with my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Only because, Grant, and this is no baloney, I don't do that. Ask your mother. She knows I'm very, very open and out with my interviews. The Killer uh, Clowns is my favorite horrible, terrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> I watch it all the time. So I knew you before I even interviewed your mom. I did a big interview with her in her home in, in on the beach. And how is Terry Moore? She's uh, she's awesome. Actually, I just had to text her and tell her I was doing an interview. I'll call her back uh, when I'm done because she just called me. Um, so uh, she's doing great. She's um, she's like the ever ready bunny. I call her, you know, she adores right. the bunny, whatever it is. She just keeps on going. She walks six miles a day, I believe. Isn't that correct? Back and forth, up and down the ocean. Anyway. Yeah. Hold on. we got to finish introductions, which is what I had. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So we got the man behind the boards, Mr. Chad Murphy. Mr. Kramer, welcome to the show. Hard bodies changed my life. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> then we have a chat room full of people. We've got England, Germany, Canada, UK, Estonia, uh, Australia. Belgium, Australia, like every country rep uh, represented at the moment. So just say hi to everybody in the chat room. Yo, chat room folks. So good to meet you. There you go. So we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, but Ron has to get all his stuff in first. Before. Well, only because I have, to go, <laughs> I have to go very quickly. Sunday, we took my little car for a ride. I take it once a week because it's a vintage, you know, Audi TT Roadster. And we're driving around Palm Springs. And for some reason, I said, let's go in Movie Colony. We went in Movie Colony and we passed by Cary Grant's house, which I know it well. And I got out of the car. I wanted to see how nice his orange trees got. And these got loaded with oranges. And I said to Jimmy, why don't we live here? And Jimmy said to me, well, give me three years and I'll buy it for you. Anyway... <laughs> I'm all about <laughs> Cary Grant because I love Cary Grant. Who didn't? I wanted to be Cary Grant. Now we get home, and Jimmy comes running into my office. He said, you'll never believe who just got contacted me and is coming well, on, I contacted on our him, show. But he said whoever, he would do it. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, he gave his, you know, Grant, Grant Kramer. And I knew right away who you were because Mom and I talked about you and her husband, Kramer. I said, you mean Terry Moore's son? He said, yes. I said, oh my God, Jimmy, do you realize that Cary Grant is his godfather? And the reason his name Grant is because Terry was dear friends with Cary and named him Grant? I said, and we were at Cary's house today. There's something wow. here that Grant has got to tell us that Cary <laughs> wants him to tell us. So over four, <laughs> there are four and a half million people out there now who went nuts and contacted me because that's our, who watches us. And they all want to know, seriously, have you had a dream recently of Cary Grant? Or have you a feeling that he has something he wants you to tell us? <laughs> I believe in this, so don't laugh. It's not funny. You know, let me tell you something. The last time I saw Cary Grant, uh, and this had to be 20 years ago, because he's been gone for a while now, right? Um, but he told me a little story that I'll never forget. And so I can't say that I can channel a story from Cary Grant, but I can tell you one that he told me. He said, if I'm going to give anybody a piece of advice, he said, spend your time finding your vein of gold. He goes, every person in the world has a vein of gold. He said, spend your time finding it, finding out what it is. Don't waste your time on anything else. Find out what your personal vein of gold is and then spend the rest of your life mining it. I he love says, it. He said, the entire secret of my success, I don't have any other secret other than the fact that I was able to identify what my vein of gold is, and then I spent, they did nothing else my whole life but just mine that vein of gold. I think that's wonderful, and I think everybody out there listening is going to be very excited about that because it's good words, and it came from probably Hollywood's most wonderful actor and handsome and elegant and like i said i wanted to be Cary grant growing up instead i became jane russell how that happened i'll never know you know that, you know that jane russell is my is well my auntie jane right she she's was, also 
my dearest friend in the world, Jane and I hung out for years together. Uh, that's why my name is Russell, because I took her name. Oh, yeah, Jane Jane and I. M- Mom knows that. Terry knows He was that. a female impersonator, and yeah. he impersonated Jane Russell for 45 in years. straight clubs for 45 years. All and, of, and then he met her after that. And then that. we became the dearest of friends. She stayed at my home. I stayed at her home. We became buddies forever until she passed. And, um, yeah. Okay. A picture, I will show it to you. I have got this, this picture. The New Year's before she died, I took my mom and Jane out with my wife, uh, you know, in a limousine, you know, to New Year's Eve parties. Um, she was great. And, um, and uh, I took a picture of her in the limo with the rose in her in her mouth. She said, Grant, take a picture. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, and, she, and she doesn't drink anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> But it's the cutest picture, and she was just such a sweetheart. And one of my favorite, one of my favorite things about Joan was that Jane kind of had seniority with my mom in terms of uh, a little bit of I think uh, age and star power. Right. She would stay with my mom when she would come into town, and uh, so and I would always go and take him out and do something. Uh, but you know, when my mom was there, it was just really when Jane was there, it was just so much fun because. You know, she was the one snapping your fingers and calling the shots, right? It was the only time I ever saw my mom actually just completely give it over to somebody. <laughs> well, you had to with Jane. Jane stayed at my I was the last person that saw Jane when she was well. Jane was at my house. She had just finished doing a show in Florida at the little schoolhouse. And she came back to my house and she wasn't feeling well. And she had a fever. And I said, Jane, you sure you don't want to go to the doctors or something? She said, no, no, it's just the flu. Now, I go to the airport with her, and Jane and I never ex- exchanged I love yous, because you know Jane didn't like that. She thought that was so Hollywood phony. But this is the first time that Jane hugged me, kissed me, and, and I said, you know, I love you, Jane. She said, you know, Ron, I really love you, too. She got on the plane. Now, they put the plane down in Tampa, or she got off in Tampa, went to friends' houses, got very ill, went into the hospital. I spoke with your mother after Jane passed away. And I said, Terry, what are we going to do? We can't go to the funeral because her son won't allow anyone from Hollywood to go to the funeral. He was only allowing the church people that she belonged to the church to go. So Terry Moore, Nancy Kwan, myself, Rhonda Fleming, uh, Arlene Dahl, all of us who were friends with Jane could not go to the funeral, which I thought was horrible. They cremated her and they threw her ashes in the broccoli and asparagus fields that her husband, John People, owned. Now, my last story with Jane was she was performing and Peter, her piano player, Peter, um, I can't remember his last name. Anyway, Peter was playing and Jane wasn't feeling well and she was kind of bitchy to me. And he said, Jane, don't talk to Ron that way. You know, he's so nice to you. She said, what are you talking about? He smacks me in the ass and tells me, move it, Russell, move it. (laughs) because that's what I did with Jane Jane only liked rough and tough people she did not like the Beverly Hills phonies darling let's do lunch she hated them you know you had to knock her around and she loved it and I never took anything from her and she liked that she liked powerful men but I miss Jane every day I talk about her always and also our dear friend Mr. Blackwell Richard Blackwell that's the last time I saw your mom Terry Moore was at Blackwell's uh, funeral at the Four Seasons uh, Hotel. So that so was Jane just oh weeks my before. Gosh. Yeah, wow. look at her, how wonderful. What a fabulous picture. I love her so much. Thank you for sharing. That's yeah, beautiful. She's, she's never going to be... cry. <laughs> well, you know, I mean... What was that, met... like just two or three weeks before she passed away? Yeah, well, I have the last picture ever taken of Jane Russell while she was well, and it was taken right before she left my house. And I have it. A couple of publications wanted it. You know, they offered me money and I wouldn't give it to them when they found out. No, I won't do that. I won't make a dollar on anything like that. I keep it for my personal self. I'm writing a book and I'm going to put that picture in my book. And it is the last picture of Jane. Anyway, now getting to you. Okay, so you first of all, off. let me just get no, it. Wait, wait. Let me <laughs> intro it, and you can take over. I'm okay. talking enough. We fight. All, we're married, by the way, legally. We got married in New York, so I, we like husband and husband. We can fight. But you guys are allowed. You guys are just, you know. Yeah. Well, knees. Now wait. Now listen to me, Grant. Your mother showed me a picture on her end table of, in the living room of you, but that was your. You have a new wife. Oh, it's that's the same wife. Huh? 
My own, it's my, it's, she's, it, well, we've been married for, it'll be this summer, I believe it'll be seven or eight years. Okay, and you finally had a kid? What the hell have I you been doing? Had, I did everything. Listen, I tell everybody, I said, did you ever see the movie with Nicolas Cage? I think it was called Family Man. Where he yeah, gets, good movie, sure. yes. He's kind sure, of like sure. the the guy that's lived the single life the whole sure, life, and he gets sure, to sure. see what would have happened if he would have lived in an alternate universe where he, you know, got married. I said, I, I feel like I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I got to live his life and still got to live the other one. Yes, right, <laughs> you're living right, on both. Right. So now, <laughs> now she's a little girl, right? No, it's a little boy. A little boy. And what did you name him? And he's the, uh, here, I'll show you a picture of them. Uh, I'll show you a picture of them um, looking at the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, you know, like you're that. as charming as your mother. You got all of your mother's nice uh, attributes. I don't oh. know who your father was. I never knew him or met him. But you're definitely <laughs> your mother. You look like your mother, I too. That's a little bit more of the serious one. Uh, who, who? So, your father was the serious Well, you got your mom's charm. That's yeah, for sure. He, 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 he married movie stars. You know, he, he was married to uh, Gene Peters before right. he was married to my mom. You're talking about Howard Hughes now. No. This, he, my dad and Howard Hughes were married to the same two women. Oh, it was Hollywood <laughs> notorious. Yes, <laughs> I know. At, oh my gosh! I look how, how adorable. Cute. How cute! Because your mother, your mother said that Jean Peters was like a butch woman. She used to lay bricks, and, <laughs> and Howard Hughes, you know, and that whole story about Howard and how they kidnapped him and gave him drugs and. Right. It was, and, you know, Jane Russell said it was the Kennedys, the Catholic, no, the Catholics, because she didn't like Catholics because she was a born-again Christian. It was the Mormons. I mean, they blamed everybody about how it uses drugs, except maybe he just liked doing them. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to you. First of all, I met you several years ago. I used to live in South Florida, and I would go to Spooky Empire all the time um, to get you know, interviews and to meet people. I heard, like, uh, it's uh, two weeks ago or something. Oh, well, it wasn't. It wasn't two weeks ago that I met you. Like it was six, seven years ago, right? Yeah, it was like a long time. We've been together six years, so it had to be like yeah, like seven years ago. I used to go all the time and get guests for the show and and uh, uh, and had a blast. It was always a lot of fun. And then I met him and we moved to Pennsylvania. And now we just moved to California. Um, but I was there when you were there. I was there. All the Chiodo brothers were there because they came there, on the show. It was a big reunion and it was pouring oh. rain. Yes, it was pouring rain. That's right. So Killer Clowns from Outer Space is like a super cool movie. And I didn't realize because I was looking up on your IMDb that Chris – I didn't even realize because we had Christopher Titus on the show a couple years ago. But I didn't even realize that he's one of the people in it. I really only paid attention to you and the clowns actually. <laughs> he's, one of those, he's one of those trivia questions. Yeah, so like a trivia question. So I read on your IMDb and we're going to talk about a lot of different things because now I, I – I have to interrupt. When he smiles, I see Terry – I see Terry Moore when he smiles. There you, you go. Got, you got your mother. Did your mother remember me when you said you were doing my show? He didn't tell her yet. Oh, yes. She did. How could she forget me? <laughs> After the language I used when I called her about Jane Russell's son, I call, your mother must have been turning red. I, every filthy word I learned in New York, in Brooklyn, I used to call her son. And I was livid. And I said to, to Terry, we have to do something. We have to have some kind of a memorial among ourselves for our Jane. But we never got to do it. But well, anyway, go back. Wait, go wait. back. Give your mom a big kiss for me, and please, oh. she have the same um, a PR girl or her assistant. Who does my mom now? Yeah. No, she actually uh, uh, Ford, has somebody new. Oh, because that gal I loved. She was Glenn Ford's assistant for many years. Judy. 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 I was going to say to tell your mom to say hi to Judy. So first of all, okay, let's go back to him. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to do, you know, we're, a con we're, listen, Grant, we're a conversation show. We're not an interview show where we ask boring crap. Our viewers love us because we bring you into our living Actually, room. he's a soap opera star, too, though. He was on The Young and the Restless for 46 episodes. We I have mean, all the soaps he's coming know, on you know, the show. He assisted as IMDb, but I think I did probably more like 150 or something like that. But there's a lot more than that. Were you on? Yeah, that was my mom's favorite soap opera, so I always watched but that look, in General Hospital. Look how handsome he is. I know. Is well, still. were you're you still, on it when Michael Dan? You're still a handsome fella, you know? Yes. That. As a matter of fact, I was kind of the bad guy on the show, uh, and I was uh, I was in love with Lauren at the time. Uh, oh, and that was Michael Damien's girlfriend on there. Yeah. So I um, I actually had uh, um, what was I'm trying to remember all the things that I did. I I actually. 
I had a hitman that was on. I was a very wealthy bad guy, and I I decided I want to kind of that she should be a solo act, and she was she was singing as a duet as a, as a with uh with Michael. So I had him I had him poisoned, so he lost his voice. <laughs> okay, now Grant, Grant, you you produced a TV show with someone who I really really got to know and love, Gita Hall. Yes. I loved Gita. And Gita was on our show, and Gita was my buddy also through your mom. And you did a, a show about Terry Moore and Gita Hall, two broads, old broads, as Terry said, who went all over the world to crazy stuff. What yeah. happened to that? It sounded wonderful. You know, I don't know. Uh, VH1 was so high on the show. Uh, because they said, "Oh, this is something very different, and you know, it's gonna, it's going to uh, completely like open up our demographic." Um, and they went and they sold it, and uh, it it became like a big, you know, it became really successful in like forty something countries. But they kept on saying, "We're going to release it, and we're going to release it then, and we're going to release it then," and they just never did, and it petered out. That, and uh, the, the bottom line is, I think that they they have a certain amount of expendable money at VH1, and so they can make more series than they actually show. And because they have very good foreign uh, distribution distribution rights, they can, in other words, they can take a chance and still not lose money. Um, and I think they just chickened out on releasing a show with two older women, uh, even though the whole show was two older women jumping in to into youth. youth. Right. Why don't you bring it back? Just get Terry Moore and say Arlene Dahl or other, all the other broads, because now Hollywood or the union, as we all know, must hire X amount of people over 75 because you have to show them it's part of the demographic. Uh, Mom is a little over 75. I think she's 76. Right, Terry? <laughs> anyway, I mean, you know. I think you should get her. There's so many great actresses out there. I mean, look at Jane Fonda, what she's doing. She's bringing back television to its finest with her wonderful show with Lily Tomlin. And they're both ladies. Have you ever seen that, Frankie and Grace? You know, I haven't, but I Wonderful. Love it. It's wonderful. There's so much good TV right now that it's almost, I mean, and you know, with us having the, the little guy, um, my, my schedule, I used to be a total night owl and it's kind of flipped a little bit. So I used to always do my TV watching late at night. Um, but there's so many good shows that I have to catch up on. But there are shows that you were creating when you did Mom and, and Gita Hall. This is Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, two I older know. women who I are know. carrying I on. See, I need to see it. But there's a few There's a few good ones that I haven't seen yet that I, I feel so bad why, about. Why don't you bring it back? Your mother's ready to go to work. She's a, she's a trooper. She'll she, work till no, she's 110. Every time I call her, she can't stop talk because she's, you know, working somewhere. So right, um, <laughs> I love it. But I'll tell you one thing: both my mom and Gita. This is a true story. Like they, they, when I was putting that show, when I was creating that show and putting it together for them, oh, this is the greatest thing in the world. Uh, you know, we're so appreciative. As soon as they got on the air, like they both put their movie star hats on. And Grant, I'm ready. For <laughs> Now, now, wait a minute. Grant, Grant, that, that's, a movie, that's a movie in itself. That's a movie right there in itself. I know Gita. I, I got to know Gita really well. Um, I was very upset when Gita Hall passed away, by the way. It was like a surprise. She hurt her foot, got an operation on her ankle, and the next thing I know, Gita Hall passed away. In fact, she's still on my Facebook page. I can't... You know, I, I haven't removed her from anything, too, and I actually had, uh, had her... At her memorial, I, I actually cut together the montage that played for him. I mean, she was she was kind of a second mom to me, too. She was married to Barry Sullivan, the fabulous actor. And also, she was one of the top models, a, a hair commercial model. I don't remember from who. And she was suing the TV show because they used her picture without her permission. And right. I remember that battle. So Gita and I really got to know each other really well. Um, she was not the star I mean, to me, when I spoke to her, she was very always. But very you weren't good. videoing her as a star. No, I know, no, show. but that's why I'm so surprised. Because to me, she was so demure and so like appreciative, and we talked about the Listen, show. They both were, but the moment they got on that on the air, Norma Desmond, they became they became twenty year old mega mega stars again. Right. I mean, both of them started arguing like teenagers, like teenage right. leaders. They, they were ordering me around like the coffee boy. I mean, 
What um, I realized, wait a second, they didn't want a TV show. They wanted a chance to be 25-year-old stars again. <laughs> Grant, Grant, you, you were blind, Grant. You were blind. You had a reality show there. You I, should have filmed that. That would have gone crazy. Uh, that would have been something wonderful. You probably got that on film No, <laughs> if you would no, seriously, that would that's not it's a reality show. You missed the boat. I would have killed to see that. It's true. Ter Terry and Gita, I would have peed myself. It's I mean real going on behind the scenes. It's the most interesting. Interesting. So so let's go to you a little bit. So you're an actor and you're a producer. And 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 I always think, OK, people are like a producer and everybody calls themselves a producer, you know. And so then I like started to really delve into you, which I see posters of all your movies behind. Not, I don't know if it's all of them, but I no. see November Man and So It Goes. These are all like like a lone, lone survivor. survivor. So you're not like a producer like everybody else is a producer and they produce these B horror movies. You like produced every movie that you produced has a list, a list like top of the fucking charts superstars in them. And um, I have I've seen I've seen those three. I also see I wrote down uh, and so it goes. I saw Lone Survivor is a great November man. I didn't see some kind of beautiful yet, but it's got Pierce Brosnan, Selma Hayek, Jessica Alba, Malcolm McDowell, who's been on the show. Like like you're like producing really cool shit. Are you enjoying producing more than acting or are you no, still doing so, both? They're so they're so different. Um, you know, uh you know, producing is like a long haul, you know, it's, it's the, it's the, uh, acting is, is like playing a sport or, or singing on stage or something. You know what I mean? It's a skill that you learn that takes place in the moment. Um, and so there's probably nothing more fun than, you know, to me, you know, getting in front of a camera or on stage and acting or hopping on stage, you know, the microphone and belting out a song, you know what I mean? Because that's the performer, uh, in me, but, uh, the ham, <laughs> that's the ham. Exactly. The, the producing it's that, it's that thing of like taking a project and, and that ball and rolling it up the hill, rolling it up the hill, rolling it up the hill and finally, uh, getting it over. So it's a totally, it's a total, it's a, it's much more of a deferred gratification type of love. Um, but I do love it. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I have to do things in the business because I just don't really know any other business. This there is you a go. now Grant. So I write as well. I still write as well. I'm writing two things right now. Um, I'm always writing something as well. Now let's just do this. Make believe your mother was a laundress and your father was an auto mechanic. Do you think you would be doing today what you're doing or were you going to give mom some credit? Oh, I think, well, you know, I think you're right. I think the exposure to it was uh, was huge in, to, in terms of me doing it. Um, the funny thing was I didn't actually start acting. I moved out of the house. I, I, I went away to school, to boarding school, when I was 14 years old, 13 years old. And then I came out and I moved out of the, my mom's house two weeks later. So I was, barely, I was a really, really independent uh, kid. Um, like Dead Poet Society boarding school? Until I was on my own, and nobody knew. Nobody knew my mom. I didn't tell anybody that my mom uh, was my mom until, you know. I mean, when I was on The Young and the Restless and already on the series, somebody found it out, and then the publicity started coming out. But I was really independent, and I just I didn't want anybody to think I wasn't making it on my own. And uh, I supported myself from the time I was, you know, a kid, you know, a teenager, and uh, that's cool. Yeah. So now, um, now, you never met Howard Hughes. No, I never met Howard. He Hughes. was way before you were born. Yes, uh, he was, you know, sometime before I was born. Yeah, because Jane told me the story. She said, well, Terry and Howard got married on a boat, but there was no record of their marriage. So therefore, because he used to marry everybody under fake names, Howard Hughes, he was crazy. <laughs> And he married Terry, but they came to Terry and they gave her a fabulous settlement, a many zero settlement. And she never sued or asked for it. But Terry Moore was the official wife of Howard Hughes. And did you know that his mother, Terry Moore, also was the first woman ever to have a jet pilot license? Did you know that your mother has a jet pilot license? She, re she reminds me still about three times a day. I know. <laughs> I, you know I can't I, any I art. Really, I really miss your mother. I can't She's got a argument ever because you know, Grant. When you check out on a jet, 
<laughs> yeah, right, right, right. You see, I, I moved back to New York shortly after my show. I, I closed my show because of a personal matter. I was involved with someone and, and it didn't work and I was heartbroken and I just didn't want to work anymore. And I felt here I am now approaching 70 at the time. Now I'm 77, but I was approaching 70 at the time and I thought I'm going home to New York to retire. Well, that was bullshit because the minute I got back to New York, I got nine million offers to do everything. So that always happens. So I haven't seen your mother, as I said, since Blackwell's memorial service at the Four Seasons Hotel. That, uh, what's her name? Uh, I can't think of her name now. Uh, uh, Cohen threw for him. Beverly Cohen, who owns the Four Seasons, threw for him. And that's when I was there with Tippy Hedren and we both got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> we were carrying on like crazy. Anyway, those are the fun days. But I am going to reach your mother, or you're going to reach your mother, and tell her she must come on this show. We have so much to talk about, because I still support Hollywood legends of yesteryear. Robert Osborne and I spoke you about... Get her to, you want me to get her to agree to be on your show right now? Yeah, I don't know if she's going to, <laughs> after the language I used about the FaceTime Jane Russell's call. son. You I'm know, not she was... She was faint. I want to say hi idea. to her anyway. You know, do you ever watch the video? It's on YouTube. You could see the interview I did with her. It's a fabulous interview. Listen to that. She's, he's actually calling his mom. You guys, That's Terry great. Moore is super famous. This is kind of like a yeah. – uh, this, is, this is only – happening. actually, it's so funny because when we had Michael Damien on the show, he called his mother in Italy. Right. So, <laughs> and, you know, we're, and, and so everybody's like calling. Like two degrees, six degrees of separation. Right, How funny right, is that? right. right. So in the meantime, you guys, like while he's like working on that, calling Terry uh, Terry Moore. By the way, the film that I remembered her was when I was a little boy was Mighty Joe Young. Oh, I cried at the end of that film. It was worse than King Kong. Go see it or rent it or whatever. It Terry was a young young girl doing a beautiful job. Now the other one was when she was with Burt Lancaster in the film Come Back My Little Sheba. Oh my God, talk about sexy. There's no woman in the world that ever portrayed a sexy little trampette like she did. The way she was seducing that boy on the sofa with the facial expression and the lip. Have movements. you seen all of your mom's movies? Of I'm course sure you he have. has. I, I don't. I'm not sure. I've seen them all, but I've seen most of them. Come back, my little sheep. Has she seen of yours? I've seen, That's I've one of your mom's seen, best work. The few that I probably haven't seen. Well, I've I, seen a lot of movies. If you said, how to me, about has wait. she seen all of your movies? Sure, I'm sure she hasn't. <laughs> she hasn't. <laughs> But Come Back Little Sheba was one of your mother's best works. I so mean, hold on. That's what put her on the map as a sexy siren. So hold on. So you have a new film, and I don't know what this is. It's, it's called – I mean, I know what it is. It's called Bad Samaritan. It stars uh, David Tennant, who's like Doctor Who. So, like, he's a huge, huge star. The trailer looks awesome for it. Like, how are you affiliated? This is your company that produced this film, or so how is this – uh, I have two companies. One is my production company, and the other one does marketing and distribution for films. Okay. So um, uh, we've done, we've, we've co-released, um, this, I think our third or fourth film with a very, very famous producer slash director named Dean Devlin. Do you know who he is? I know the name, but I don't really know who he is. Dean produced like, you know, became very successful. He produced movies like Independence Day and Godzilla. Okay, huge movies. Huge, 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 like mega billion dollar blockbuster movies. Um, and now he still produces, you know, a lot of TV shows like Librarians. And, Love that show. Uh, and he directs like half of the episodes on the Librarians. And um, Leverage is his show he produces. He's got a couple other ones. But anyways, oh. Dean, Dean is uh, he's kind of my a mogul buddy uh, of mine. And um, he directed this movie, financed it himself, directed himself um, and uh, came to me and said, um, you know, hey, will you release this movie with me? And I said, yeah. So we've spent the last couple of months putting together the big finance, the big promotional campaign. And um, the movie, you know, tested off the charts, you know. So he came to, he didn't just come to me and say, I've got a movie, do this as a favor. He came to me with, you know, audience test results showing me. Then I watched the movie and I went, wow, this movie is <laughs> it's really scary. Um, well, you know, it's not scary like a hack em up horror. Right. It's scary, kind of like The Hitcher was scary, if you remember. Yes, that. great movie. Yeah, it's so, basically about these two these two uh, young uh, valet parkers who've got a scam going, where they they work at a nice restaurant, and when somebody comes in with, you know, their with uh, an Aston Martin or some like great car, 
you know, they, this is somebody for everything, buddy, to watch out for. They, they just hit home. And while the person's eating dinner, they buzz to the house, you know, use their, their garage door opener to go in and they, they steal basically all their shit. Well, they steal shit that wouldn't be noticed for months. You know what I mean? Like they'll find a credit card that's come in the mail, a new credit card, blah, 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 and call from their phone and activate it and then ditch out because they don't want anybody to connect them to this. It's a very nice scam. You know, two young guys that are basically good guys that are uh, have kind of put a scam together, but they're not bad guys. They're, they're decent guys. Well, of course, with one house they go into and they open a door and it's freaking silence of the lambs. Yeah. They call the police on that guy. They're like, fuck, what do we do? So they anonymously call the police. But this guy is so smart. He's like a genius, David Tennant. And uh, it's very similar to the part he plays on Jessica Jones, if anybody watches Yeah, Jessica, Jessica Jones is great. You know, he plays that great psychotic you know, guy. Well, he's kind of similar type of guy to that. Well, when the police come... He's got a beautiful girl on his arm. He's wearing a robe. And he says, well, you're welcome to come in, right? And he's cleaned everything up already. And now he starts to terrorize these kids uh, in all the most dastardly ways. It looks awesome. So tell me. What what is it you want people to come and see? Tell us something you want to push. Push something. No, this is it. This is what we're pushing. I want him to push it more in detail. Give us the title. It comes out Friday. That's American. We need the title. Bad Nobody Samaritan. gave the title. Bad Samaritan. The trailer already has 17 million views it's on YouTube. Good. Nice. 17 good. million. It opens this Friday. It's directed by Dean De- Devlin. It stars David Tennant and some great young actors. Uh, it's. A, we, we need the title. Bad yeah. Samaritan. He said it five <laughs> times. Well, I didn't get it. <laughs> you know, old people, old people uh. like me watch our show. You got to you do it slowly. Our brains don't. That's you know, okay because we're going to play the trailer for everybody. Chad, right. do you have the trailer? And, and we're going to watch it. Awesome. Chad, do you have the trailer? No, I want. We're going I Saturday. Do. We're going to Stan Zimmerman's wonderful hey, opening hey, night. Go back to the- of his play. I want to talk two seconds. No, no, no. We have to go back to this. Just just stop. Okay, hold on. So we got Bad Samaritan. Chad, you have the trailer so we can show our millions of people audience. Yes, sir. Okay, so I want you, Grant, to uh, uh, introduce it for us. Just introduce it. We're going to play it real quick, and then we'll come back. You guys, this is this is the movie Bad Samaritan. It opens this Friday. It is a white-knuckle, edge-of-your-seat horror thriller. It's awesome. You're going to love it. Uh, you can't go see Avengers that many times, so please share some of your butt uh, real estate and money with uh, with us at Bad Samaritan. It opens this Friday wide um, all over the country. So please go see it, and um, I'm sure it will be opening overseas well if you're in the U.K. or wherever else you may be. Bad Samaritan, here it goes. Perfect. Happy birthday, Mother. Sean, is that Amber? I got a good deal through a lady at work. Really? You still digital cameraman? You still use these? Absolutely. I love this one. Crazy to think what you could do if you did this for your full-time job. I'm just a poor, struggling artist. Enjoy your dinner, sir. I'll see you in 10 minutes, brother. That's a beautiful car, sir. Yeah? Don't touch it. Navigating home. Oh, you beauty. Yo, talk to me. Black car. Shut up, Doc, for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything cool on your end, yeah? They're just getting their salads now, man. Be right up. Dude, the guy's outside. Where the hell are you? <sighs> I'm sorry. Visions. He's got a girl. Chained up. What were you doing at this guy's house? I was robbing him. So we're investigating a girl chained up in the office. Sorry to disappoint you. You're gonna stay on it, right? You're gonna keep searching for the girl? Stop harassing him. Oh! What's wrong? We're not safe. None of us. It's all good, I got your back. Are you crazy? 
crazy. You know that. Crazy people get caught. You know why you're not in their little jail right now? Because you're in mine. I'm gonna get you out of here. But and she would is everything. No, Terry's a I nice. My glasses. She's you know what Terry Moore is a true. Oh, we got about 15 but seconds. Don't forget Terry Moore was a child. There you go, star. Jimbo. They, you're back. All right, everybody. So that was oh. Bad Samaritan, starring David Tennant, coming out Friday. It looks awesome. I think it, Chad. What do you think? That looks awesome. That right? was outstanding, no doubt. The chat room says they think it looks awesome, and they all want to go see it. So congratulations. It looks like you're going to maybe have a hit, another hit. So, like, listen, guys, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Oh, good luck. Grant, it's got to happen because I feel it. <laughs> there you go. So then I have another and question. And listen to me, Grant. You listen to me, Grant Kramer. You're coming back on this show again. No bullshit. Anytime you have anything to promote, Whenever we'd love you, to have not you Not even. If you just want to come on and chat with us, we have so much that we can talk <laughs> No, so much do we have so much in common. We have your mother, we have Jane Russell, we have old Hollywood, we have new Hollywood, what you're doing. We have a lot to talk about. And you know what? I know that the people that are watching and listening to this show right now are going to put in our chat room a great show. And when, inter when interviewers get guests like you, we want them back. We, you know, I did Cliff Robertson, big major star. I interviewed him. And all he did was, yep, nope. Yep. Nope. I was going to kill myself on the air. So I had to shake him out of, out of the bush. And I said, I heard your wife was a bitch. Oh. <laughs> that <laughs> took him up. He said, she was not. I said, well, she always played a bitch. He said, well, Ron, that's called acting. And then he went about a Joan Crawford story where she tried to molest him. I mean, it went, it went, it went the right way. <laughs> well, it's true, but I had to shake Cliff Robertson out of a tree. Then his car broke down and I had to drive him to where he was staying. He was a guest of the Hiltons, the Hilton Hotel people. And I drove up their driveway, gorgeous, beautiful greenery, and I got to the house. It needed a paint job. The house was falling apart. And this is Hilton. So I said to Cliff, this is a dump. Couldn't Hilton do better? He said, oh, he's really frugal. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, because we only have a couple minutes left. And I, ha I know that people want to know, because I went on your IMDb, and it said that in development, which that could be, mean nothing, actually, but it says the return... Of the killer clowns from outer space in 3D. Is that what? gonna really like be something that you're working on? I no, love that movie. It's something. I actually, I actually, I worked with the Kyotos, and uh, let me just climb that. I worked oh, with the Kyotos. <laughs> We're on the computer, and you know the phone like rings through the computer. <laughs> yeah, you have uh, a Mac, right? You're on a Mac because mine does that too. So yes, we have a script um, which I actually wrote. I developed it with the Kyotos, and I wrote it. And um, we've been kind of close to getting it off the ground a couple of times. It's kind of like I said, that ball. It's like you know, producing is rolling the ball up the hill, and then sometimes you get it right up to near the top, and it rolls back down. And that's happened a couple times. Um, but I'm not giving up. I think we have a really terrific script, and um, I just uh, I think uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, that movie is just a lot of fun. The interesting thing, you know, you said it's like one of the, it's one of your favorite, you know, bad movies. The difference is, is that most of the time when you, when people say that, they're saying it because somebody tried to make one kind of a movie and they completely goofed and it ends up being something else. Yes. You know. Um, well, it's a very colorful movie in color. It's well, interesting. Let him, finish his point. Let him finish his point. Yeah, well, I'm just interrupting because he's going the wrong way. He's <laughs> no, going, he's not. You yes, don't know where he's going. No, he's going the wrong way because I love the film and everybody no, loves it. No, 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 you, my, point, my point is this, is that the Kyotos grow, grew up loving B A outer space movies. I mean, that was, just like Quentin Tar Tarantino grew up loving Grindhouse movies. Right. Um, and wanted to make a Grindhouse movie. Right. It was, you know, when you watch Grindhouse, it's intentionally like that. It's not like right. the oops, I was trying to make, uh, you know, uh, right. Glorious Bastards. And I ended up with with Grindhouse. Right. He went to make it. Well, the Kyotos loved Aliens from Outer Space movies. So they they like everything was intentional. I mean, they meant to make it to be exactly to give you that experience. It wasn't like they slipped on an apple on, on, on a. No banana peel and, and, and it no. became like that which a lot are you know kids yes. kids, kids today that watch that film 
are not upset or frightened by it because we no longer have fun houses. But I came from Brooklyn, Coney Island, fun houses. And clowns were the scariest thing in the world. So when you went to Coney Island and you went to the, the fun house and you saw these ugly clowns, you got scared. That's why I love the film, because it was authentic. It wasn't really a fantasy film. It was filmed in a clown house. Exactly. And by the way, you know what? You know what always scares me about Coney Island? What? If you get this reference, warriors come out and play. yes, I get it. <laughs> what, what is it? He won't. He he doesn't know warriors, but we actually. Uh, David David, David Harris. David Harris is a pretty good friend of mine, and like he's one of the stars. Well, I'm of talking that. about Coney Island in their fifties. So he's talking about the six. When did warriors take place? Like in the seventies? Probably the seventies. Warriors is warriors is another classic. I cult. love it. Oh my uh, god, I love it so that, much. It's like this the street gang of the Coney Island, and so it ends up there, and that's like the famous line of the bad guy saying. Warriors, singing. and he's clicking the bells. Yeah, Warriors. but Coney, Coney Island is not back then what it was when I was a kid. When I was a kid, it was beautiful. What scared me was the ske- steeplechase face, the guy with the teeth and the big smile. He kind of he kind of looked like Batman's uh, uh, the Joker. Uh, the Joker. <laughs> And when I was a little boy, he scared the hell out of me. But I remember my father loved going where they used to have the women walk and the air would blow the skirts up. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the whole Mary Monroe blower thing. So right. here's what we're going to do, everybody. First of all, follow Grant. He's on Twitter. He needs followers. He should have millions of followers. So follow him on Twitter. He's at Grantman C, Grantman C right? Grantman C? Yes, I believe that's it. Okay. Uh, so- look and make sure. No, I, I put it on the flyer that I made, so I, I looked it up. So follow at Grantman C on Twitter, you guys. Check out all his different uh, uh, films that he's produced. Make sure you go see Bad Samaritan this weekend. We wanted to have a big opening. Uh, check out Lone Survivor and So It Goes, The November Man, some kind of beautiful. And check out all his works as an actor and as a younger actor. Uh, what, Chad, what was the movie that you said you liked so much, the one with all the naked chicks? What? Was that the movie Hard Bodies? Hard bodies. There you go. Check out New Year's Evil, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, Raptor. I actually like that one. Save Me, uh, The Return of the Killer Clowns, Watch Some Old Young and the Restless Things, uh, and An Inconvenient Woman. That was a good one. Yeah, that You've was been a busy that. boy. You're a busy yeah. boy. And I will definitely do shout outs and I'll push your movie in the coming weeks to make sure that everybody goes to see it and enjoy it because you are, my friend, a very, very. Uh, rounded, interesting man who I'm sure would only produce good stuff. I mean, I know so many producers. I just want to do one little thing for my friend Stan Zimmerman. His play is opening night. Opening night is Saturday. Jim. Friday. Fr- Friday. Jim. No, Sat- Friday is my party. Okay. I'm having a party. Everybody's coming. It's a big deal. <laughs> Tristan Rogers, his wife, you know, the whole gang. But anyway, Saturday night is opening night, and I. Be damned if I remember the name of his play. I'm oh, going to kill good. myself. <laughs> anyway, Stan Zimmerman is the guy who did the Golden Girls, the Gilmore Girls. He's a dear, 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 dear friend of mine. I love him to pieces because he's producing and looking for money now to present to you Silver Foxes about four gay men in Palm Springs. Sort of like the Golden Girls, but with four gay men. We want to get it off the ground. So everybody out there, we're trying to it's raise It's called the Knife to the Heart. The play is called Knife, Knife to the Heart. Knife to the Heart, and it's about a circumcision. So I know we're going to be hysterical. I am, yeah, I'm, I'm covering the play. I will report it. I will give you my true feelings. As you know, I never lie about these things. If I don't like it, I don't say anything. If I like go. it, I talk about it. Grant, you're wonderful. Grant, you're fabulous. Thank you so and much. Thank you so much for giving us so much of you. You're like your mother. She gave me five shows worth of interview. And the same with you. And you're coming back. Thank you, Grant. And I, Thanks, and I Grant. look forward to the day that I can shake your hand. I look forward to it too. Thank you guys. Bye. Take care, baby. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Everybody loved it. Everybody loved Grant, you guys. Listen He's to the chat nice room. They person. all love him. So He's listen up, you guys, because we, we're running out of time. Um, and we got to get our next guest on the line in a minute. But, Chad, we got to do one more music video premiere, and then we'll we'll play the video to call the guest like we did on the last one. How's that? Hi, Captain. All right, everybody. This is the world premiere video of, of Lucretia's Island. By Andy Michaels, the Australian singer we had on the show a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's off this album, Revisited. Uh, nobody's seen the video yet. I hope you guys like it. So check it out. Lucretia's Island by Andy Michaels.
transpired Now it's forty long days And forty cold nights And still there is no sail or trace of you in my side If I were a whale I'd feel no pain Cause I There you go, Jimbo. All right, everybody. That's Lucretia, Lucretia's Island by Andy Michaels off his album Revisited, and hope you guys enjoyed it. And the chat room is saying that, Ron, put this in your car. Well, I have news for you. It's already in my car. Hey. There you go. you got to like love it. It's a great song, and so we really like it. So, Chad, I let's, call, uh, let's call our guest because um, we are I don't want to be late. I got it. And, and, got your guest guys, calling in. How about that? There you go. Perfect. And there you go. Yay! Woo! Hello! Hi there. You hear us? Yes. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. <laughs> uh, yes, glass is off. There oh. you go. Hi, hi, oh. superstar. How are you doing? You have to tell me. Now you're live. Everybody hears us to- talking about all this. You know, normally we play a song, and then and then I can we can get you on. But please tell me correctly, is it Arminante? Yes, it is. Oh my God! I got it right. I'm so excited. Ooh, hey, it's a hard. It's a hard. No, no, this is a hard name, though. No, it's not. It's, a, it's it's easy for me because it's an Italian name. Okay, so, so I'm gonna. Italiano. 
Sì. Sì, bene, bene. Beve, bevere qualche cosa, no? <laughs> All right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the fabulously talented actress, producer, director, and writer, Jillian Arminante. Hello, and welcome to the show. Hi. Yay, I'm so excited. First of all, let me introduce you to everybody, starting off with my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. I only know her a second, and I like her already, so I know it's going to be a good show. <laughs> she looks like one of these cool dames that really knows her stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> maybe. Right. Uh, I don't think maybe. I think you're very, very clever and smart. Hold I on. we got to finish introducing her. Well, you're always I'm, talking. I, I like to talk. I'm Italian. <laughs> Boys, do your laundry elsewhere. Uh, <laughs> we always do it on the air. I love it. <laughs> Love that. Do your laundry all so quick. first of all, we have the man behind the boards, Mr. Chad Murphy. Hey, Jillian. Welcome to the show. Good to have you. Uh, thanks, Chad. Nice to meet you. Hmm. <laughs> then we have a chat room full of people, and literally we have um, we have Germany, Belgium, the UK, Canada, uh, Australia. Estonia, Australia. Like almost all the major countries London. are like covered. So please just say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hello, everyone except Greenland. <laughs> okay, we don't think we have anybody from Greenland in the chat room anyway, so you're good. So how, how many people tell you you look like Meryl Streep? Oh, my God. Someone told me that last week, and I, I see no resemblance. We're both from New Jersey. You absolutely uh, look like Meryl She's Street. from New Jersey. Oh, well, that's yeah. not a thing to be brave. Mary Lou Streep is from Morristown, New Jersey, as I recall. Right. And you even sound like her a bit. It must be a Jersey accent, you know, from Jersey. She's a better actress, though. From, You're a better actress than her. I'm from Brooklyn. I have a Brooklyn accent. You gotta yeah, like love it. Take the bridge, don't turn. That's where I grew up. First, <laughs> first of all, I want to like give you kudos um, and say hello to your wife because you have the most beautiful wife on the planet. Um, uh, are, you, are you confusing her with the fabulous supermodel? She is like no, I'm not. I I googled her and saw pictures of you guys online at all kinds. Oh, oh, oh my actual wife. Okay, here's. Oh no. Oh, no. I question. mean your actual wife. I yes. think my actual wife is gorgeous, but she shares a name with a British supermodel, and they're both Alice Dodd. And if you look up Alice Dodd and Alice Dodd, you'll you'll see. I think my wife is gorgeous. Thank you so much. I think your wife is gorgeous. She's an actress, also, right? Yes, she is, and She's a writer gorgeous. and a producer as well. And she's in. And she's so how long are you guys? Married? And she's in kittens in a cage, right? That's the one I looked up. She is. That's okay, true. she's gorgeous. She's like smoking gorgeous. <laughs> I, I, I have never seen her, so I can't comment. But how long have you guys been married? Gosh, well, that's a complicated question. We met in um, '95, um, and then we got all sorts of varying degrees of possible married we could. Um, so I guess technically our first. Marriage was in 2000. So you're together a while. I love it when straight people say, oh, those gay people, they just keep changing partners <laughs> weekly. I mean, I know more gay people that are married longer than straight people. I think we got it and right. And they have two, two, wait, two children. I, we, do also, we do also. <laughs> I think they got it wrong and we got it right. There you go. Jimmy you got and I are married it. five years. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, I used to have dark hair. Now I'm white. <laughs> so It's happened to me. <laughs> marriage does and, it's, and you know what, sir? It yeah. is a privilege. You bet. You bet. I, I love my Jimmy. I love everybody, Jimmy. Everybody, everybody in the chat room is saying, oh, my gosh, that's so great. They didn't know that you were part of the LGBTQ community. So, like, everybody, like, loves it. Um, okay. Thank you. And I think it's fantastic. So you guys, first of all, if you want to follow Jillian on Twitter, it's at Jillian Arminante, J-I-L-L-I-A-N-A-R-M-E-N-A-N-T-E. You will recognize her from... So many cool things. Um, back in the day, like if you guys watch Judging Amy, she's like on all the episodes of Judging Amy. Uh, Girl Interrupted with Winona Ryder and Angelina okay, Jolie, which is one right of the greatest there. movies ever stop made. Stop right there. Hold it. Do not go any further. I've told all our people they know it. Angie Voigt grew up in my house in California. My daughter, Deirdre, my daughter Deirdre and Angie went to school together. El Rodeo. And I watched hey, Angie. At Beverly Hills High? No, no, we left. We went back to New York, and my daughter oh, went to private like school. Like elementary school. But all of elementary. But Angie came in and out of our lives. I remember when we moved back to California, Angie came to our house in Beverly Hills, and my daughter was a string bean, no boobs, no hips, no ass, nothing. She was 14-year-old pole. And in walked this va-va-voom. 
hips, boobs, lips, face. I said, oh, my God, Angie, I can't get over you. Look at you. You're a grown-up girl. I said, you know, are you going to be like that in the movies? She said, I don't know. <laughs> well, she did, and she's wonderful. Now, um, that was quite a film to be in, my darling. I wish I could be in that film. Winona Ryder, oh, my God, what an actress. Everybody in the film. Like, everybody, even you. I mean, everybody. There's just like the film just works. It just goes. We watch it like once a year. It's yeah, such a fabulous it, film. It, it's one of my favorite films. There's it's, also the lovely Clea Duvall. And, I love Clea Duvall. Yeah, and I didn't realize that it had. Who's the other girl? The girl who's in all well, the movies? Brittany Murphy, who, who passed. Oh, I knew that one, yes. Uh, right. but Elizabeth Moss. A very young Elizabeth Moss is in that film. Wait, wait. Was no, there's her? another. Who's the girl who like made the movie where she like tears, kills all the people and sews all the pieces together? Oh, who's the other girl that's in the film? Now I, I feel like an idiot because like I love her to death. I, I met her at a convention one time. Um, I'm not sure who you're referring oh to. Oh my gosh, I have to look it up. All right, talk for a minute. I have that, to look that it film, up. That film was so well done. It's amazing. You know, I, I like to critique film because that's my job. And I really can't find anything about that film that I don't think is wonderful, real, authentic, beautiful. <laughs> done there was not one actor in that film that was bad everybody delivered their lines did their... Beto was in that film so are you talking about angela bennett's yeah yes. angela uh, bennett. i have not seen her since we filmed that movie in harrisburg all those years ago Oh my God! I love, but Angela Bettis is. I'm a big horror movie fan, and so she's like kind of like iconic in the horror movie, you know, world. But I, I want to know what made you. The, how? Let me put it right. Uh, what did you think when they offered you the part? In Girl Interrupted. Absolutely. Um, they offered me a different role, um, and Lisa Beach was the casting director. I just moved to town from Seattle, and uh, they offered me the role of the nurse. And she, I looked right at her and I was like, really? And, like, <laughs> and I didn't know you didn't really talk to casting directors like this. That's, like, that's called having balls. Let me tell you. Want me to wear white on camera? <laughs> and she goes, what role would you play? And I was like, the gay one? <laughs> and as a result, instead of spending a week in Harrisburg with all these crazy, lovely actresses, I, I spent the better part of two months. So, right. Uh, it was a good call financially to <laughs> up to the gay one. So. And, work, and work wise too. I mean, cause it's such an incredible credit. Everybody thinks the movie, I mean, everybody, it wasn't Jared Leto in that or who's the yes, guy. Jared was in it as well. I mean, like if you look at all the people that were in the film, almost everybody has gone to have a really successful, fantastic yeah, career. Yeah. You know, it was really like a who's who of like who the next big superstars are going to be. Well, look what they were. Look at Mangold as well. I mean, Mangold uh, is going to be. Yes. But when you have when you have a, in a film when you have a cast like that, you either look terribly bad or you become terribly great. Because you're banging off of people who really know what they're doing. I mean, working with Angie, Winona, you, and a few others has got to be a joy. Because you all feed each other. You all give the energy to each other. And it's it, obvi obvious in that film. When I talked to Angie about that film, she said she worked her ass off. You know, it was difficult film. The, the, the scenes, the, crying, the, the carrying on. That's That's draining. Yeah. Now, I mean, what, what was you know, honestly, I honestly they, I was in a I, they found me in a bar in Seattle and I just rolled into town. I did a play, and so I didn't know who anyone was, um, which was kind of refreshing. Um, yeah. I mean, I heard of Winona Ryder, but I, I just showed up and we, we ripped it. We had a, we had a really great time. I love it. Now was that a big budget? Was that a big budget film? I, I don't having not had to pay for it. I don't know. Oh, because you no, know, no, I don't think I don't think it was a mega million film. I think it was a, a pretty, you know, reasonable budget film. Uh, sometimes those films are far better than these mega million films. I find. So hold on, though, I have to go back because I got we we stopped on Girl Interrupted, which, by the way, is a fabulous. I you know, love that fabulous movie. Film. I can't go beyond that. You're so lucky to have been in that film, my sweet. That film is is. Ugh. So hold on. So then other things you guys could have possibly seen, and I only picked out the things that I watched because you have so many things on your resume. But um, you've seen her on Fresh Off the Boat, Dropping the Soap. We actually had Paul Winton and Kate Mines right. on our show right. before that came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love them. Yeah, well, yeah, we, we had we, we had them we on our show too. last year before we uh, like when we were getting ready yeah, to move. We love them too. Such yeah, a good they, job with that, man. Have you seen the series? Yes, it's fantastic. Oh my gosh. Paul Winton and Ann Kate, both of them just kill it. 
And yep. then uh, you've, we've seen you in Better Call Saul, which we had um, Patrick Fabian on the show right. last year. Right. And, uh, and he's and super cool. Patrick's wife, Mandy, is one of the writers on Dropping Soap. Oh, that oh. I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, see, there's so, so many six oh, degrees of second. It's a family. Uh, the Dark Knight Rises, you guys. Bad Teacher, great movie. Like I said, Judging Amy, which I used to watch all the time. I don't know. I must have skipped school or something. I don't know how I would have been home to see that because it was in the daytime. But, but, uh, <laughs> but I don't know how I saw it. But it was a great, great show. Um, and she's got another thing called Kittens in a Cage, which did you actually do you write Kittens in a Cage? Your wife is in that one. <laughs> Kittens in a Cage uh, was based on a play written by Colleen Conway Blanchard from my old alma mater theater in Seattle called Annex Theater. And it was a play in which they were all in the same room. And I, I called her and I said, can I make it a screenplay? And she said, sure, have your way with it. And I, I sort of busted it out and made it a little more colorful. And um, we just had so much darn fun. That's a fun show to check out, uh, kittensinacage.com. It's on Amazon. It's on iTunes. It's on Vimeo. It's it's tongue in cheek woman's prison. Very funny. Okay. Great actors. That I mean, will like, but like Joel McHale's in there. Felicia Day, Misha Collins, like really, really great okay. cameos. Michelle Monaghan, Amy Burnham, and like Time Daly. Like everybody came in and played a little bit. So it was great. Love it. Now coming from New Jersey, how'd you wind up in Seattle? Um, that's interesting. All places in Seattle. Well, uh, I was a young actor, um, a character actress who knew I wasn't going to be working steadily for many decades. Um, <laughs> you know, I sort of wore every butchka and set of overalls they, they could throw at me. But when you're 20 years old, you're like, eh. exactly. so I wanted to get as many chops as I could. And at the time, um, you know, Steppenwolf in Chicago had already had their big wave. And I heard that Seattle was going to be the next sort of theater Uber city. And I, um, I drove a Plymouth Valley across country when I got there at $8. And so I started calling people. Um, I accidentally called a porn theater thinking they were a regular theater. <laughs> I did not get that job. And then I called Annex Theater, which was a collective of um, Yale undergrads that found a old Fred Astaire dance studio and negotiated it for a dollar a month. <laughs> We made 24 original scripts a year. And they are now in their 32nd year, so they're still going strong. Awesome. Good for that. That's good news. Yep. And then but when I was in Seattle, uh, Tom Hulse, who's the actor who was most, most known probably for Amadeus, who is also now a producer. He produced Spring Awakening on Broadway. He produced American Idiot. He was casting a play he was directing based on John Irving's The Cider House Rules. And apparently he kept going, I need to cast a big, angry, defensive lesbian. And everyone in town said, have you, have you tried Jillian Armadante? Have you called her? <laughs> and so I did the workshop of that play in Seattle, and it brought me to L.A. where I got cast in Girl Interrupted and Judging Amy. And so, so at, what, at what point did you say to yourself, I'm on my way? It's happening. You know, I just, I, I, I always want to just be a working actor. Me too. I have those sort of delusions of grandeur. I'm a utility right. player, and I'm right. proud of that. I like being in the trenches. Um, Me too. I'm the same. Yeah, I mean, in order to, like, you know, so many people come here and want, like, you know, and I no. I just like working. So See, Now, Jimmy loves being a star. That's why he calls himself Jimmy Star. Well, it's true. But Jimmy loves the notoriety. He loves being recognized. He loves all that baloney. I'm the opposite. I wish I wouldn't, you know, whatever. When we go out, sometimes people come over. I get like, not annoyed, but I get embarrassed because what I do is nothing special. And the people make you feel so special. They get so lit up like, oh, my God, are you Ron Russell? Like, I relax. <laughs> Relax, I'm nobody. <laughs> Hang on, I'm I want to go. I want to go back to that though. I, I became Jimmy Star because yeah, I. But, yeah, wait, no, no, Jimmy, wait a second. No, asks, you have to let wait, me finish. Wait, no, wait. When somebody asks you for an autograph, you get all excited. That's because it's light fun. Up. Hey, well, I'm not going to lie about it. I, I do what my pal Jane Russell used to do, and I learned this from Jane Russell. When we'd go out to dinner, people would come over and say, "Oh, Miss Russell may have an autograph." She'd say, "No, but you can have a photograph with me." So get your your phone out and took a picture. And I'd say, Jane, it's easier to sign it. She said, no, it's not. She said, it's dark in here. I don't have glasses. I can't see. That's hysterical. 
No, so I wanna, that's what I do. I want to like rectify it though. I no, start, wait, 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 no, wait, wait, no, wait, you have wait, to let me rectify wait, wait. it. Now you will go after this. What do you do when people recognize you and ask you for an autograph? I I give it to them. Hey, you but, I mean, but but what kind I of a feeling? Do you, what's the feeling you get? The emotion inside of you. If I'm in front of my teenage daughter, I feel a little cool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just. Her mom, um, but uh, no, it feels good to be recognized for your work in a way that's spiritual from other people, and the appreciation in their eyes is is wonderful. I mean, because people spend time with you, right? I feel the same way about my favorite actors that Me I too. spent so much time watching. I mean, you said Jane Russell, and I was like, sure. oh my god, you know, my Bar best friend, Sasha, and I had the uh, her cocktail music album that was phenomenal. Really? Um, I probably have it right over here, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I think of all the time I spent watching. You know, they were like best friends. Well, so. that's, that's why my name is my name is Russell because I took her name when I was a, a teenage kid. Uh, I am I impersonated Jane for forty five years in drag, and finally met her twenty something years ago, and we became like brother and sister. I mean, clo oh, clo we went to just homes, we hung out. I mean, we, ad we adored each other. In fact, she left my house and died. I was the last one to see her alive. Oh, my goodness. She got sick and passed away in the hospital. But uh, we just did that with, uh, with uh, what's his Grant name? Grant Kramer. Grant Kramer, Cary Grant's godson, he was on. Um, <laughs> No, the point. Hold on, hold on. I, no, no, no. Well, I'm going to come to you now. Wait a minute. Okay. The point that I'm trying to bring out is there are some people who go in the business for that, for what you did, and there are people like you and I who are just factory workers. <laughs> That's right. That we're factory workers, sweetheart. We're in the factory. We are. Fa people ever saw a movie studio in the morning? They would vomit. I mean, it stinks. It's it's horrible. It's freezing cold. You know what? It's it's a factory. It's a big, ugly building. Okay, but hold on. I want to like clarify real quick. Okay. My entrance into the world of entertainment was as a clothing designer. Um, I did costume design for films. I had two showrooms in Florida where all the celebrities came and shopped. And I, I couldn't. My real name is Jimmy Stewart, and I couldn't trademark Jimmy Stewart for a clothing line name. And I thought, what's going to look cool on T-shirts and everything? And so I became Jimmy Star to be a clothing designer. And it just so happened that all these other things like happened. But I didn't name myself because I thought I was a star. I just thought it looked. Cool. <laughs> and I would sell a lot of sh I would sell a lot of clothes, which I did, and I dressed a lot of cool people. And we and have had a, a lot video of fun. right now. Armanante translate as leader of a Christian boat. So perhaps I should switch my. <laughs> <laughs> no. So. So hold on. So now let's talk because you have a new project and it's a very exciting you project. Are Wait, you she are has what a funny broad. She, she has a new project and it's a movie, you guys. It's called. First of all, she directed it. I don't know if you wrote it. Did you write it? I it's called not, Stuck. I did not write it. I I produced it and directed it and I acted in it as well. Um, and uh, it was introduced to me by new filmmakers, uh, Larry LeBeau, who read the script, oh, sure. Heather Ooh, Turpin right. and David Mickle, and thought. I think Jillian would be great at this. So everybody, uh, we we froze a second. We froze. Okay, no, she's not. She's, she's unfrozen. Back. There you go. She's unfrozen. Where, where are you? Hold where, on. Where are you now? Oh, me? Yeah. I'm in uh, Los Angeles, very close to Paramount. Cool. So you're right. We're in Palm Springs, so we should have no problem. Okay, so hold on, you guys. So the name of the film is Stuck, and Jillian is the director. Some of the people that you will see in it: Felicia Day, Joel McHale. Kristen Vangsness, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but you guys know she's Penelope from Criminal Minds. She's awesome. Um, Heather Matazero, who's probably like one of the most underrated, greatest actresses ever. I'm so in like love with her. She's so fabulous. And and Constantine Maroulis is in it, and I only bring that up because he's been a guest on the show. He um, has? He's yes. Saying, I've known him since he was four. Oh, because yeah. New Jersey. That's Jersey. Right. right. We grew up he on the same street. Oh, my gosh, I love this. Isn't that a small world? So, and here's, here's a little synopsis, you guys. Darby finds herself in trouble with the law and is sentenced to house arrest. Now she must serve 30 days in the home she used to share with her ex-boyfriend that he now shares with his new fiancé. So, obviously, oh, this wow. is a comedy. What a mess. And uh, it looks fabulous. And you guys know, uh, if you're a horror movie fan, you know Heather Matazero because she was in Hostel 2. Matazero. Uh, Matazero. Okay, right. and she was in um, Scream. She's in the. She's in Scream. She's in Hostel Two, and she's in Welcome to the Dollhouse, which is one of the coolest movies ever on the planet, and well, at least I think so. And uh, and this thing whole looks looks terrific. So tell us a little bit about it. 
Well, it's, it's, it is an amazing, uh, first of all, the script was amazing. And then we got to jump off and have actors play, um, you know, Heather's uh, very, very talented. And she throws it in both the comic and the dramatic, uh, destinations. Amir Talai is also, uh, in this. He's right now he's on LA to Vegas, that, that TV show. Uh, there's a really super funny actor named, um, Avery Pearson who is not as well known as some of them, but really look out for him. He's incredible. Uh, also in the film is Chris Redd, who is a, one of the newer members of Center at Live. I saw him in a, a club uh, doing a show uh, called Hate Date, uh, Stories of Digital Dating. And uh, I just fell in love with him and, and gave him a part in the show. Now he's on Saturday Night Live, which is awesome. Yeah, that's uh, way to go. So you know how to spot talent. That's terrific. <laughs> Good. I, I'm looking for work. <laughs> If you need a seventy, if you need a seventy-seven-year-old, halfway decent-looking old man, you got it. I've made it. I've, I've been in the business fifty-eight years, made film, staged everything. You know all the crap that we do. I love it. So wait, what? what I'd love to see your um, two little girls from Little Rock. Well, actually, I do have film. I have. We took a lot of film back in those days, but of course, it was a, it was over the air. You know, we didn't have the equipment we have right. today. But um, believe it or not, looking at me now, I actually, Jane and I, when we were together, people thought we were related, especially when they heard my name. And they'd say, you're, they'd say your mother, meaning Jane was my mother. And then sometimes they thought we were married. Uh, but Jane and I resembled each other tremendously in person. She has the same mo nose I have and the shaped face and Hey, oh, wait, wait, go back though, because Stuck is going through to film festivals. Is there any, we can't see that yet, right? Uh, if you are in New York on May 11th, you can see it at the New York City Independent Film Festival. There you go. Uh, 6.45 p.m. on May 11th. Look it up at the New York City Independent Film Festival. Uh, we, we are very excited to announce, uh, and this is probably the first show I've done since this has occurred, that we have distribution through a company called North of Two. And we are just so happy about that. Congratulations. That's, that I, way we'll all get to see it. Now I must do my little campaign and you must help me because you are LGB like we are okay Stan Zimmerman do you know who he is I do okay Stan is a genius he's my idol Richard Osborne and I have spoken of this in New York you know from TCM many times about we must preserve film we must keep the actors of yesteryear famous as they do in Europe Stan Zimmerman, who wrote for the Golden Girls, Gilmore Girls, has now geniusly put together four gay men in Palm Springs, subject to some, some of the Golden Girls, and it's called Silver Foxes. They did four a gay guys in Palm did, Springs. They did a table <laughs> reading that's out of this world. Every actor in it is gay. You have to be gay. Straight actors, don't, don't audition. I am fighting for Stan to get the funds. The networks are a little afraid of it because they're still homophobic. And they think it might be a little too gay and that uh, young men might turn gay if they see it. God forbid. <laughs> I mean, you know, every like we have all that power. <laughs> I mean, I, I walk down the street and every guy that looks at me becomes a fairy. I mean, in a minute, I just look at them and I go gay and they turn. So anyway, we're working with Stan Zimmerman. Please, if in any way you can to help us, it's not about making money for Stan or anybody else. It's about fighting to have the right for us to be on television as gay actors, not playing straight people. We want to be known as gay actors. We want to work as gay actors. We want to be accepted by the world the way they accept nice. Black, One thing that's really wait, black people, Asian people, and all sorts of people. So please campaign with us for Stan Zimmerman's Silver Foxes. Fabulous. I have funny. to say though, like, because one thing that's really cool, I find very cool, is that you've been out the whole time. Like, and you're, you know, there aren't that many people who are out who actually can say they're like working like all the time. Well, you know, it's interesting because. You know, I just never, I showed up in Hollywood already with a partner, already gay. I didn't like hold it and hide it and then make a big announcement later when it was like, I just, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's not a weapon. It's, it's who I choose to love. So um, it was probably less um, impactive, you know, to, to not string it from the hilltops, but 
It's very cool. <laughs> I didn't either. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I, do, do you know who Tab Hunter is, the actor? Tab Absolutely. Hunter? Okay. Yeah. I interviewed Tab and I've become friends with Tab. And I said to Tab, I think in the interview, why is it that he was lovers with Anthony Perkins for three years or four years? I said, why is it that you guys did all that bullshit in Hollywood with Sandra D dating all the romance magazines when in fact you were living with with Anthony. He said, Ron, in those days, if we even hinted that we were gay, we would immediately be fired, locked up, thrown off the lot, and nobody would want to see us. He said, don't forget, I was a heartthrob. Millions of girls were in love with me. He said, if I came forward, that was dead. I said, okay, Tab, now you're 77 at the time, or 76, and you came out. What was it like? He said, like undressing and being nude in front of a camera. He said there was nothing left. There was no no camouflage. There was no no anything. This is me, right. Tab Hunter. And he found it to be a horrifying experience, but he did it. And I loved him for it. And I, I commanded I commended him on what's the word I'm looking for? Quick, quick. Commended. Commended him on it. And I said, Listen, honey, better late than never. Uh, and he and he agreed. So oh, what was it like for you when you went places and you knew that people knew you were a lesbian? What did that do? I mean, I know when I go out, I don't give a fuck. Excuse my French. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to curse. I mean, I'm gay and this is what you get, baby. You don't like it, turn away. But most guys look and they like it, even at my age. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> what was it like for you, seriously, entering a room of all breeders and there you are, this lesbian woman? Well, I, I love breeders. <laughs> Me too. I, I'm one of them. I have two children. I, I, my, my parents are breeders, thankfully. Yes. My and daughter's a breeder. All of my brothers and sisters are breeders. And frankly, I'm a breeder too. Just Me with, too. Me too. I have two kids of my own. Um, I, you know, I, it's that thing of like, I, I marched in the street a, as a young girl for the right to be married. And I, I, uh, you know, marched with ACT UP. And um, it's interesting talking to my children now and telling them that there was a day when teachers had to march in the gay pride parade with a paper bag over their head, lest they were fired. That's right. And they just look at me like, you're kidding! Like, they just have no idea um, what it was like. And, uh, you know, I, I grew up in a very Republican um, Italian section of New Jersey. And I think perhaps that was why I moved to Seattle, so I could explore who I truly, truly was. Um, you know, I did date boys and girls back and forth, sort of. And I was dating a boy right before I met Alice. So... Um, you know, I, I don't want to, I, I don't, I ran one of the gayest, uh, the biggest gay theaters in the, the country at the time in Seattle called Alice B Theater. Um, but, but it's hard because if you, if you ghettoize it, then you're ghettoized. But if you just incorporate and be, I mean, some of my friends are straight, some are gay, some are, I, I try not to make a remarkable um, thing of it, but, you know, I definitely that's where we are, too. Yes, we but just you're, know you're considerably younger than I am. Yeah. Now, remember, when I was 17 and 18, I was a very pretty boy. Very pretty. I, I always wanted to look Stop. manly. Oh, Stop. thank you. Stop. Thank you. But I always wanted to look manly and be butch and be rugged. So it was difficult for me. Because yeah, it's very difficult for him to be butch and rugged. <laughs> oh, stop it. No, in high school, in high school, they used to say, Ron, which Ron? Oh, you mean the fag or the fairy boy or, or oh, here she comes, the, the queen. I mean, I had to live with all that shit. So I got very tough being an Italian from Brooklyn and I beat everybody up. Now, beating everybody up gave me a reputation of being Crazy Ronnie, which they nicknamed me because I'd beat people up. Nobody really understood why I was beating them up. I was beating them up because I was then at 17 fighting for freedom of who I was. Well, and I to, was, to a huge extent, you know, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. So thank you for that work. No, I was at Stonewall, I'm proud to say. And I, yes, I did plenty of damage. I was very, very active back in those days. I've always been uh, active with all the, I mean, in the newspapers of the village. I mean, I've been all over the place fighting and fighting and fighting. And here I am at 77 and I still hear gay slurs. I still hear that an actor won't get a job because he's gay. 
I mean, I get crazy from this. I did a show with Kay Ballard where we discussed all the lesbians and homosexuals in our business. I wanted the people to know that my Cary Grant was gay. He was living with Randolph Scott. Richard Blackwell, the 10 worst dress list, had a three-way with him. Even rumored that Doris Day years ago had a girlfriend. Okay. said Mr. Blackwell told me that. He, his boyfriend's sister, went out with Doris Day. Of course, poor Doris, who I love. And Hold forget, on, you have to like, speed it up. because you. Forgive got me, Doris, I'm not outing you. This is a rumor, darling, so I'm sure it's not true. <laughs> uh, but um, we've got to get all the gay actors in Hollywood today to come forward and let people know who they truly are. Because, feel, folks, all of you, all four million of you out there, you go to the movies and you sit and you swoon because the guy is gorgeous or the girl is sexy. Meanwhile, they're gay. And what would happen if you knew that? Would you it's not getting better. better. I, 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 it is getting better. I, I, you know what? Not fast enough for me. I've signed 60 years worth of bullshit. You know, in and out, in and out. In okay, the so 70s, they like gay, then they didn't Real like quick, because we've got three minutes. and uh, I want her back. Uh, we'll, I love we'll her. We'll bring her back. First of all, though, real, real quick, because we were talking about, about stars and people that you've like, looked up She's to or like that you've me. been able She's to meet. Who is Who are like some of the people, like, if you had like a bucket list and you could make a, be in a movie with anybody, you know, who is somebody that you're like, oh, my God, I would really love the opportunity to work with this person? Well, I, I've been very, very blessed to work yes. with many awesome, awesome actors and directors. Angie, Angie Boy, number one, my baby. Well, there's there's Charlize I've worked with. And wow. Her and, oh. you know, I've worked with some really great and some great directors. I mean, oh, wait, you know, stop, 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 no, wait, stop. Got, no, let no, 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 she's, she's got, got one minute. She's got like I one minute. Oh, she's got to spend it telling me about Charlize. Is she not the most gorgeous, sexy thing in the world? Uh, she is beautiful in every way. Oh my God, I'm crazy about her. She's her face. I could watch her all day long. Okay, hold on. Let's go back then. If oh. we, uh, otherwise, because oh, we've got heart. like we got like a minute and a half. What would be if you could have been in any movie that's ever been made in history? You know, and you think, oh my God, I wish I could have been in that movie. What would the movie be? <laughs> Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Huh? Virginia Who's Woolf. Virginia oh Woolf? wow! You know how many actors say that? I have no fear. Not as funny. <laughs> no, I would say that half half of the actors we asked that question, the, the women all say Virginia Woolf. Absolutely. Now listen to me. You're going to promise me something? All right. Maybe. You're going to promise you're going to come back? I can come back. Because I think you're terrific. I, I love everything about you. I love your outness, your openness. I love that you fight for us. I love that you said that beautiful thing about standing on our shoulders. And I'm going to cry a little bit. Oh. Uh, He's all, everybody listen up. This is Jillian Arminante. Follow her on Twitter at Jillian Arminante. Check out when as soon as it's available, stuck. Go to go to film festivals and see it. Check out all her great shows. Check out Dropping the Soap, Fresh Off the Boat. She was in Hail Caesar. I have to say that's the only one movie. I, I was uh, it was a little bit of a miss for me. That's like the only thing. But everybody has to have one. And uh, I think that you're. <laughs> Kittens in a Cage is actually a love story between two women. It's we're going to watch it. We're going to watch it, everybody. Kittens in a Cage. Kittens in a Cage. dot com, right? Yeah. Can we get Can we get it on Roku? It's probably on Amazon. Uh, it's not on Roku, but it's on Amazon. There you okay, go. Okay, we'll watch it tonight. So everybody, I please I you we'll watch support it all the great work by Jillian and her wife Alice Dodd, not the yep. supermodel one, but another one who looks just like a supermodel, and she's in Kittens in the Cage. And we want to thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. And, and you congratulations me, on your stellar and career. She said she's coming back. Otherwise, I send the mafia after her. I called <laughs> Brooklyn. They break I know the them already. She knows them already. <laughs> I, love <laughs> I, I absolutely love you. I really do. You're terrific. Jillian, thank you so you much. You know what, Julianne? I think I want to meet you one day. We should go out and do something. I think we would have a great time. Right, I'm serious. I really want to. I really. When you come to Palm Springs, I'll give you contact. Call us. You'll come to the house. I'll make pasta for us. <laughs> All right? I'm serious. Thank you. Bye. 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 She's one hell fabulous. of a broad. Isn't she fabulous? Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We had great guests with Julian Arminante and Craig Grant Kramer. God, I'm like screwing all up. And Chad, thank you so much, everybody. Please tune in next week. I'll have this up on YouTube shortly. Have a great one, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye. 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 Bye.
Hey mate, wanna go to a party? Party, 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 party. 